David, when you look at uh, South Africa, there's a lot of mines, and so I wanted to pivot to kind of talk to you about mines and maybe you're holding in Glencore. Um, when you look at Glencore, they're on the acquisitive trail. A lot of their competitors aren't. Are there any deals that you worry about? Are they being too aggressive? I mean, not at this stage. Most of these deals end up being relatively small where they're, they cost a little bit up front and they control a, a lot on the down, on the uh, lower end of it. For instance, if you look a year ago, or so there was the deal for the Russian oil company. And here we are a year later, and basically they've gotten their money back and an agreement to distribute or to market uh, and trade uh, the oil that comes out of that oil company. So these, these things look like there's a lot happening, but when you really look at money that has been spent, it tends to be rather small. I mean, some of the uh, Glencore competitors have been paying higher dividends. Is Glencore getting it right? And this goes back to one of the conversations that we were having before, is that you have a number of options as a CEO, and you need to, I guess, you know, invest, acquire, but at the same time give back. This is exactly right, Francine. This is what we analyze management's ability to do. What are they going to do with that cash flow? And there has to be balance, and there has to be uh, a demonstration that they are able to deploy funds where it will create the most long-term shareholder value. And I think for the most part, <laughs> if you look at the deals that have been done with Glencore over the last year, you can see a clear route to value creation. Yeah. So, so far, I think it's, it's been a very uh, appropriate and good actions that the management mm -hmm. have been taking in some of these acquisitions. Look